This lecture is a continuation of our previous lecture where we started looking at uh, costing and we, we, we talked about different types of cost, how we can categorize them, how we can dif differentiate them. And we discussed the main problem of costing, which was overheads. Today's lecture is on a traditional absorption costing system, which is basically the one which we had uh, in the past since uh, the, uh, since we had management accounting. And it was used massively in industrial era. And uh, this is directly relevant. This method is directly related to the budgeting process, which we will discuss later on in this module. There are quite a few different accounting techniques which look into how to allocate the overheads in the best possible way, as accurate as possible. Strangely, none of the accounting methods are able to allocate our overheads correctly, 100% correctly or precisely. 90% of the overheads are allocated um, to the correct products under activity-based costing. But even then, 10% uh, remain, which cannot be uh, uh, directly allocated. So directly allocated means we can clearly identify that this cost, which was incurred, relates to that product. The major problem in costing is indirect costs. Direct costs are, are easily quantifiable and identifiable. So we can actually allocate them. Now, this direct cost on material or labor is allocated to our laptop. This is uh, allocated to our PC. This is allocated to uh, a printer and whatever we produce in a factory. So these are directly attributable, allocate, uh, allocated and identifiable products. No problem there. Even when it comes to exam, real life or exams, these are the costs which are easy to deal with. The problem is always the overheads, and I did say uh, that, uh, especially in the in in the new uh, era of manufacturing, where most of the production is automated, overheads uh, make a bigger proportion of the total cost. Maybe sixty to eighty percent of the total cost are overheads, and because they are a bigger proportion, if you get them wrong, if you allocate them incorrectly, the chances are. Uh, that our total cost, which we have calculated for different products, would increase that uh, those costs are incorrect. So if you're dealing with more important thing, we need to be more careful. But absorption costing uh, uh, doesn't do that uh, uh, that precisely. So, however, the indirect costs, uh, th these are the main problem. And in this case, uh, what we do uh, in absorption costing when it comes to uh, indirect costs, that we allocate First, we allocate them. So if we can directly identify some overheads which are directly attributable to a specific product, we allocate them. So if we hired some, um, hired some machinery or we know that this department only deals with that specific product, then the cost of that department could be uh, allocated to uh, that specific product. So where the costs are can clearly be allocated, uh, uh, directly connected with a specific product, those costs would be allocated. Uh, in another scenario where we have different uh, departments in, um, in our uh, factory, and we can clearly identify that this cost was uh, for that department. For example, uh, manager of finishing department or uh, assembly department, we can clearly allocate those costs there. The other one is apportionment. So th those costs which are um, related to more than one product or more than one uh, one department, those costs needs to be apportioned. So that is the process which you will see today in this uh, in this lecture. Direct costs are easy. Uh, they will be uh, directly entered on the cost card and then the fair share uh, of indirect cost uh, needs to go to uh, the unit. Now this word fair share, uh, as you can see that uh, what is fairness, obviously from different people's perspective, uh, it, it is different. Uh, if we have five different departments in a factory and each manager uh, would have their own opinion that what is the fair share of, of the overhead cost which should be allocated to my department. Every manager try their best uh, to get as less cost <laughs> as they can. Our main problem is 
overheads and there are many techniques but today we are looking at absorption costing a blanket overhead one factory uses one overhead rate for all different products obviously the actual cost would differ because of how long it took to manufacture them but basic rate is the same we have our total overheads we divided by our activity a direct labor hour our machine hours and we get our overhead rate now which is 15 pound per hour in this case overheads are then sub subcategorized uh, into cost center now the cost center could be a department so last time i discussed about that a factory having an assembly uh, finishing uh, packaging uh, and, and dispatch department or so on so one way of doing it would be to accumulate all of the overheads for each department and if a factory is being managed departmentally then that 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 what's going to happen okay so different managers uh, they would have their allocated costs first of all which are easily identifiable with each each product uh, each department and then common costs for example rent of the whole factory uh, relates to the all departments so that needs to be a portion that needs to be divided uh, among all of the departments if a factory is doing certain products uh, fixed products so we can take an example of coke factory they are very specific products uh, and they could allocate and apportion their overheads to each department so so they know that how much does it cost them to manufacture each type of product when we talked about this word fair uh, there's one way to deal with this that uh, there are standards used that okay if a cost was incurred for all of the departments then we need to have some bases and these are normally commonly accepted bases so all rational people would actually understand that this this does make sense <laughs> so if if there are more than one uh, department or products and uh, obviously the different people dealing with them then those costs um would be a portion so rent and rates uh, would be distributed uh, or apportioned as per floor area of each department obviously if a department uh, uses more floor space then they should get uh, more cost of the rent and rate just like you know if a program in this university needs more classes bigger classes then they should uh, bear more cost of electricity and lighting and heating uh, etc then if the cost relates to machine uh, insurance or machine maintenance then it should be on the basis of machine value it is possible that assembly department is using uh, less machinery and finishing department is using more machinery uh, so in that case our uh, machine insurance or repairs cost of machines should be based on the value of machine telephone calls who uses more uh, more um, more telephone um, obviously if you talk about uh, ordering and dispatch department they, they could be using more uh, more phones uh, phone calls otherwise the production department may not be using uh, any or very little phone calls so depending on uh, what is uh, the usage and then depreciation is machine value these are very few um, bases here obviously i couldn't include everything but these are the most commonly used and we will come across few others when we we will be doing our our questions uh, later on but this fair share is is based on some bases uh, which we need to understand uh, if you think about that 1.848 million worth of overheads uh, we need to uh, allocate and uh, apportion those overheads uh, among different departments. So first of all, we can have all of our departments. Uh, in, in real world, we could have more than 10 departments in a factory. In the, our example, have, we have two production departments, which are called cost centers. And then we have two service centers, uh, which are uh, service department, uh, C and service department. And this could be our store. And can so first of all, we will allocate uh, all of those overheads to these four departments. Now, what happens that 
all of the costs, they need to have an outflow uh, from the from the from the factory. Just like I gave an example of uh, a bucket full of overheads, and each product needs to absorb some of that, and then eventually we need to make sure that our bucket is empty. There's no water left. There's no overheads left in there. So how the process works that our production department they deal with products which go out of the uh, factory eventually and they have a little bit thick overhead with them. However, service departments, they don't uh, deal with uh, uh, over, uh, products directly, so they can't use that thing. So before we can actually uh, absorb our overheads into the products, we need to allocate the cost of these two, uh, these two departments to uh, production departments, which are our cost centers. And then only the cost centers can uh, send this cost to different units, one, two, or three, uh, um, depending on how many units they are dealing with. A different way of looking at it, uh, first of all, allocation obviously is charging of the, which I've explained before, that allocation is charging of overheads which are specific to each department. Supervisor of assembly, supervisor of finishing. It's easy. And then we have apportionment of uh, uh, overhead is the sharing uh, relates to one department to do uh, on the on the fair basis. I have examined this bit before it is in the exam that find allocation and apportionment. Uh, with giving an example. Um, uh, after that, service department cost needs to be apportioned to the production department using a suitable basis. And then once we have all of the cost to our cost centers, uh, which deal with our units, which deal with our production, then we can actually, um, we can actually absorb them into our products and get rid of um, all those overheads. So costs within production cost centers are charged uh, to a cost unit using overhead uh, absorption rate, OAR. This OAR could be based on labor hours or machine hours. Uh, it could be other bases. For example, uh, I dealt with on the basis of units, total units. That is also possible, our percentage of direct labor hours. And different, different businesses, different sectors, they uh, do it very differently. But the main task when you're dealing with overheads our our ultimate goal is to get an oar once we have that then uh, we have done most of our work uh, which is budgeted overhead divided by budgeted level of activity looking at reapportionment we have two uh, in our in our previous slides uh, we have two uh, cost centers and then we had two service departments so let's say if one of that is canteen so first we apportion uh, canteen expenses to canteen department. And then what we do with the canteen department, we reapportion that cost to the cost centers. How are we going to do that? Obviously, uh, depending on the usage. So if you have three departments, uh, 10 people in IT, five people in accounts, and five people in sales, uh, that means uh, one half goes to IT, and one fourth goes to uh, accounts and answers. So on the basis of some basis uh, uh, will be required. You should try to read full chapter to get in-depth information on, on this.